Hi there, my name is Pablo Requena, guitar maker, and in this video we're going to be looking at how to make solid, solid linings. So the linings, just to make sure that we know what we're talking about, is this strip of wood that we need to fit inside the guitar to be able to join the sides and the back together. Sometimes it's also used to join the sides and the front but that's not the way that I do it in my guitars and not so many people do it that way. This is mainly the element that we use for uh, we fit it inside the guitar at the top edge of the uh, sides just before we're going to be joining the back and it gives you that extra surface areas where you can work with and be able to glue the back on uh, to close the instrument. So this is what we're talking about. This one is made of cypress and it's solid but it's laminated. So basically this is two pieces that I have glued together to give me the right thickness. Now why that thickness? Because um, so this one has uh, about 4.5 millimeters in thickness. And I do it this thick because on average you use you want to have the bind the linings, sorry, bindings, linings, they all sound so similar. So the linings need to be pretty much the same thickness as the arrangement that you're going to have in the guitar for bindings and perfilings together because that is the amount of material that you're going to be removing off the corner of the back and of the front from the guitar to accommodate the bindings and perfilings together so the lining needs to be thick enough to be able to accommodate that rebate that you're going to be making on the guitar if it wasn't big enough when you cut the rebate what will happen is that you actually will be separating the back from the sides and that obviously will be a problem. So if you make the linings more or less the same thickness as the bindings and perfilings together then you know that by the time you cut the channel you still have enough of the lining left to hold the back in place and the job will work and everything will work fine. So this one in particular, as I say, is about 4.5 millimeters thickness. The depth is just over 10 millimeters. This one is looking a little rough because it's just been cut from this one, which I've just laminated. I'm going to show you sort of stepping backwards how, how to get to this point. And once you have the lamination done, you cut one strip and then you shape it to whatever shape you like. Here you can see I've done a little bit of the shaping which I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's just something really simple. You just get your rasp and round the internal corner and then with a bit of sandpaper clean it up. And you can do that all the way along and it will end up looking really nice. But I don't want to show it on the video because otherwise this video is going to get too long. I just want to show you some key jobs to be able to get to this. Now why do we laminate it? Because the thing is that you could say well let's just bend it like that and it is possible to bend some timbers uh, at this dimension uh, but not always. So if I was trying to bend cypress at this thickness the chances are that I'm going to break it unless you have a really good steaming box and you steam it properly and you know it's a very different procedure which you might not have the right setup to do that. I suddenly haven't so I don't do it that way. So laminating it it's a really good option because what we need to do is to get two pieces that are half the thickness so this is about 2.2 millimeters in thickness and then by the time I glue it together then I get the right thickness. So before we get into um, in, into more details I want to show you basically the raw materials. So the raw material is and you can find this in, in many different timbers from your luthier suppliers it's really bad quality uh, cypress and I, I repeat it's really bad quality 
um, it's basically Cypress that you wouldn't want to use for your guitar. I mean, you can see you've got this terrible knot here. This is just not going to work because this could be good, but this is not going to be long enough for making uh, the sides on your instrument. Uh, however, you'll be able to get a strip along here and utilize some of this, even though you've got a bit of a bend, which is not ideal for bending either. So I wouldn't use that even for this job. It's just not good at all. But this one, for example, you can see you have this big knot and those two little knots here. So this is not good enough to produce the sides for a flamenco guitar. But here you have a nice wide section where you can get a strip like this. And so this one could be very useful for this job. Same with this one. We have the same problem. We've got these two holes, probably from nails on the tree or, or whatever. Uh, but the reality is that we can't really use it. But we can get thin strips to be able to do the linings with. So you can buy this from most uh, luthier suppliers and they will be really really cheap and they will be all too happy to sell them to you if you ask, the, you ask them but the thing the good thing about it is that also you'll find them in mahogany you'll find them in sapili in other timbers that you might want to use for the internal components on your instrument this one i'm going to do it with cypress because i like using cypress when i'm making flamenco guitars but for a uh, indian rosewood instrument for example you might want to make it with uh, mahogany or with cedar, and that would be much more in line with the rest of the internal components that you fit in, in, in your instrument. But the process will be exactly the same. So now that we saw the raw materials, we're going to get this out of the way. I'm going to put this somewhere to make a little bit of room here in the bench. So the first thing that we need to do is to prepare the two strips. And what I've done Again, I'm not going to show you how to do this in this video because I'm sure by now you know what to do here. Basically, I've cut them at 45 millimeters wide. And yes, that's it, 45 millimeters wide. And that is because it's the same width. Yeah, it's the same width as the strap that I'm going to use for bending them or clamping them together. You'll see in a moment later on why I'm doing that. At this point, I just want you to know it's the same width as that, 45 millimeters. And then I've passed them through my sanding machine to get them down to 2.2 millimeters. And, you know, they're sort of flexible, but not enough to just bend them like that. So what we're going to do is that we are going to bend them just quickly. This is a very fast job. And we're going to put them in my um, bending jig and this is going to be the first job that we're going to do once we have prepared the two strips that we're going to be bending. So what I need to do is to get a little bit of silver foil, like just a bit longer than the timber that I'm bending, like that. And now what I'm going to do is to get a bottle with water. I'm just going to spray water in this here, like this. I don't need a huge amount. I just want to have enough to dampen the surface. And this is going to help with the bending. It's so hot here that it's already drying, so I better work quickly because if your workshop is hot and dry like mine is, um, we're in the middle of summer now here in Spain and it's really hot. Plus, I need the aircon, otherwise it'll be too hot here. So you imagine the, the environment here is very dry, so it, the timber wants to dry really quickly on me. You're not gonna notice this, obviously, but when you do it, you might do, and it's the smell of this wood. It's just beautiful. So it's a really nice job to do. Right, so. I've got plenty of water here and now what I'm going to do is to wrap it up and what will happen is that as I heat this up in the bending jig this foil it's gonna keep 
the steam that is going to be originated or created because the heat is going to transform the, the water that we put here into steam and that's going to help to bend this much better. 2.2 thickness is not too thick so you might just do it without any water and you know you could try to do that but it's actually a little bit too thick for good bending usually if the sides for a guitar will be just a little bit thinner so I don't want them to break and doing this it will help to make sure that this is gonna dry properly so I'm gonna come over to this other bench where I've got my bending jig here ready I've got the uh, heating blanket there and I'm just going to put these two pieces here and into I'm going to place the top plate and I'm not going to explain a lot about the bending yank because this is a very different job altogether and each person will have a different way of using the bending jig. I'm just going to do this uh, quickly and get this job done. What I'm going to do is that while I'm doing this I'm going to get the blanket to start warming up. It's fairly quick but that will save a little bit of time. So the reason why I'm putting these pegs is because if I didn't have them uh, the blanket is a little heavy and you'll see that actually it doesn't touch the wood so there won't be any heat being transferred into the wood so I need the heating blanket to be up against the wood that I'm bending otherwise this is not going to do anything. So the first part of the job is to bring this section down There you are. I can flex it a little bit, but I don't want to flex it too much because this is not ready to be bent. So this is very quick. D yeah, the blanket, it's already getting hot, but it's going to need a, a couple of minutes. So that's going to give me a chance to talk to you about the courses that I organize. So basically, I run guitar making courses here in my workshop, in this very workshop here in, in Malaga, in Spain. And if you're interested to come over and build a guitar that then you'll take home and you'll enjoy playing for many years, have a look at my website. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video so that you can have a look at the, the details, the dates available, and all the information that you're going to need to be able to do one of these courses. Also, I have an online course, which is basically a, a collection of videos, which is available also online to purchase. Uh, to stream and basically it's a similar course but it's in a video format and it means that you purchase that course and it will give you all the information that you will need to be able to build your guitar in your own workshop. Let me just check this is not getting, yeah, it's getting hot but I've got a couple of moments. Also together with the uh, guitar making course video that it's available in that website I have two more videos one of them is actually about how to make one of these very same bending jigs which is a really really good piece of kit and if you're going to make more than one or two guitars it's really worth even if you're going to make just one it would be worth to do it however it is going to make one guitar you know maybe just bend it by hand but for anybody who wants to get into this as a hobby or professionally this is really an important uh, jig to have and then there's also another video, apart from the, the complete course, which is about how to build the Solera mold. Within the videos of the course, I do explain about how to make the Solera and the type of Soleras that you'll have. But in that video that you can purchase separately, it's basically dedicated to how to build it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I can hear that this is now sizzling. This is basically the water. It's boiling and it's turning into uh, steam. So this is telling me that this is, so I can touch it, but hardly, if I leave my hand there, I'm going to burn myself. So this is how I 
determine when this is hot enough to bend. Some people use a gauge that they put in an element there and they'll give you the temperature. For me, I don't work like that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring down the waist a little bit, this way, but not all the way down. And then I've got these side blocks and I'm going to use this string to help me place that in there and then I've got another one for the other side I'm gonna come this way so we've got this one here the smell is great <laughs> it's just such a change you're not gonna get any of that in the video of course but um, you can believe me it's there so I'm gonna start with this one and you know I can be fairly fast with this because I know this is really quite hot you can see the steam is coming out but the silver foil that I've put in there is kind of keeping the water in there instead of escaping and allowing allowing the steam to go which means that then it wouldn't have the same effect so I'm gonna bring this one down slowly 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 there you are and now I can go all the way down. So now that I have the two uh, ends down, I'm gonna finish the waist and I'm gonna go all the way down as far as I can go. There you are, that's it. And now what I'm going to do is to unplug my heating blanket because we don't need any more heat here. So this is a bit too hot to work with and until this is gone completely cold we won't be able to take them out to be able to use it. This is the same for anything you bend it, whether it's the sides or perflins bindings or linings you have to wait until it's completely cold because otherwise if it's still warm the um, the grain or, or the timber is not going to be fixed and it's going to lose quite a lot of the bend that you got here what we'll do is that later on i'll do this off camera i will lift this up a little bit and i will break the silver foil to allow the water to drain out because i also want to to get the water out so i will do I will break the silver foil a little bit in the both ends and put a little bit of paper here to capture all the water that is there and to allow the water to come out. And then tomorrow I will take them out and I will be able to carry on with the job. However, what I've done is for this video is that I've got these two ready here. So these two are ready to go. This is how they came out from the bending jig. And you can see this is really springy it's it's quite normal especially with cypress you know um, most of the waste is keeping the shape but still also flexible this is quite normal but what will happen is that as soon as we glue these two together the whole thing is going to become it's still got a little bit of play but it's going to be become a much more rigid structure so we'll come back to this in a moment what we're going to do is to glue these two together so to glue it you're gonna need a few things you're gonna need um, a jig to be able to wrap the whole thing around and to be able to do this jig you need to take into account that if this is your template this is the one that I used you probably have one like this one this it's not exactly this shape. The size of this shape is basically, this is the outside of the guitar. So this needs to be this dimension minus two millimeters for the sides, for argument's sake, because they can vary slightly, but usually I made them at about 1.8. Some people made them a bit thicker, some people a bit thinner. So on average, we can say two millimeters. So the size of this jig will need to be minus two millimeters here, minus, the 4.5 millimeters that you want to have there so this jig overall needs to be 6.5 millimeters smaller 
than the full size template. But you need to use the same template to build this jig width. Otherwise, these are not going to fit very well. And basically, to make one of these is really not complicated. It's just I've got paper here to stop the, um, the glue from sticking into the wood. But it's basically three pieces of plywood. And I cut the first one and I marked it carefully and cut it in my bandsaw and then cleaned it up. And then I put in the next one and trace it. And with a router with a trimming bit, I trimmed it off to make them flash. And then the third one. And because this was exactly half of the template, I, I actually wanted to add this foot here to be able to work a bit better with it so that I wanted to have more than just half the template, I wanted it to be a bit bigger. So you'll see how all I did was to add on one piece here. What you could do is to make this piece just wider. Uh, for me, I was kind of working along, I was, I was, I was trying to work out uh, how it needed to be, so in the end I found that I needed to have a bit like an extra section here. But you could do that from day one, if you prefer. So you need to have a good shape to be able to glue this onto it. And then we come into this belt. And basically this is something from a seat belt from a car. I just went to the local scrapyard and asked them if I could have one. And um, they didn't mind. And if they do, you can buy one for just not much money I'm sure and basically you have one end with the attachment that you have um, bolting the seat belt into the car which is very useful and all I've done in is to bolt into it one of these tensioners uh, which you can buy um, very easily in, a, in any hardware store this is gonna help me to compress everything together you'll see later on and then um, at the end because the seat belt was too long I cut it and you can see I've done this stitching into here by hand it was pretty tough but you could also take this to a tool repair shop and they will stitch it for you at the right dimension and this is also part of um, the attachment that was in the car so you can get everything uh, from a scrap yard um, if you want to go down this end and, and do it like this. Now I'm not going to give you the dimension of this belt because really you need to work it out for your own instruments so you know this shape is just the way that i do it and yours might be a little bit different so it wouldn't be any point to give you the dimension of this belt you need to work it out for yourself okay so because this belt is 45 millimeters wide that's also why i wanted to have these strips to be 45 millimeters because i want to have good compression and good clamping pressure so that when the linings are together, I can barely see the join line. I want to have a really good glue join in here. I, I don't want to have any gaps. Um, it probably would do the job, but I just, it's just, I don't think it's good practice. So you want to have a good, good um, contact here and you want to make sure that everything clamps well. And to be able to achieve that, really you want to have just the same amount of wood because if this was wider it's not going to compress things properly if it was thinner than the belt it might work but also i think the edges might not be pressed down very very well so that that was my choice so you might want to try something a bit different see how it goes right so the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm just going to present this here get the waste where if it's in comfortably and I want to cut this a little bit because to make sure that this has got good, um, where is a pencil here? To get good pressure, I'm going to cut this at this point because I know I've got plenty of excess here. So all I'm going to do is to I don't, it doesn't need to even be so accurate. So I'm just going to make one line here. And I'm just going to cut it over there in my bench. There you are. Let's get rid of that. And now this goes there. I'm going to do the same 
in this end a mark here and another one here to see that these are the two outside pieces right so what we're gonna do is to also put one mark in there and another one here so that's gonna help me to uh, position these two so that they line up at optimum place because if they move around too much then they won't fit in so well so I want them to fit comfortably so the next job is to apply some glue so I got my glue here this is just tight bond original and I just put it in a smaller bottle because I find that it's easier to to work with um, before I glue it actually I'm going to mention about another element that you're going to need and it's this clamping block because this one is the one that we're going to use here to clamp the waist with a big clamp here so you want to make sure that this shape corresponds well with the outside of this so what you could do is before you clamp everything together to make this block you can tape you can tape the sides here and then get a bigger block plant, uh, place it on top and trace your line so that then you can cut this in the band so but basically you want to have a good fitting block here to be able to press that area there okay so that's quite important as well so now that I said that I think I'm ready to go and glue all of this together so let's do it I'm also going to need a spatula to spread the glue with and I'm going to take a couple of things off the bench so that I have a bit more, more room. Right, so I'm going to start with this one. Here you don't need a huge amount of glue. However, you want to make sure that you have glue on the complete surface. That that you hear there is the wood is starting to move around and accommodate to the shape. So from time to time you hear those cracks in there, but actually nothing is broken. It's just the wood is um, moving around. Okay, so we got this one. I'm gonna put it to one side for a moment, and now we're gonna do it. 
put the x here, so we need the glue in here. So it's a good idea not to have a huge amount of glue when you do this job because if it gets really messy it's actually a little hard to get everything lining up well and, and to do this job properly. So you just want to have um, a thin coat of glue everywhere. And I do it in both sides even though it might be okay in only one. but. It's just to make sure that there's not going to be any areas that are not properly stuck together. So I'd rather have a bit more glue than necessary, but I'm also trying to be careful not to overload this. Right, so. Let's get rid of this. <coughs> so now we have our two pieces together. So what we're going to do is to make sure that everything lines up properly. I'm going to put everything against the bench because I don't want these pieces to disalign like that because then it's not going to work so well. So we're going to bring this to there and yeah, I think I'm also going to use a little bit of tape. Because I don't want these lines to slide around too much either. So I'm just going to put this in there like that. And another one here. And the idea of this is that these lines line up towards each other reasonably well. That should be sufficient. Right, so back to the jig, put this in the right place. Then I also have, uh, it goes this way, I have these two strips of tape in here, which is also going to help me to locate the black strap and then I'm going to put this block here everything is nice I'm resting against the bench and I'm trying to place I'm trying to place the um, clamp in the middle of the strap so that the pressure it's even evenly spread and okay so I don't know if you can see here but you can see that there's a nice amount of squeeze out all along which means that there's no gaps in there so I'm happy with this right so now that I've got that what I'm going to do is that I'm going to clamp this jig into the bench, so I'll be back in a sec. I just need to get a couple of speed clamps and we're going to put one in here to hold the jig onto the bench and another one in this side. There. 
and then now that the jig is uh, fixed onto the bench I can pull the straps and just check that everything is lining up properly and it looks like it is so what I'm going to do you can see why this tensioner here is going to do a very good job for us so all we need to do is to hook these two together and then check again that the alignment is good and yeah everything is good so all we need to do now is to start doing it up then this needs to be nice and tight like that. so to work out the length of your black belt what you could do is once you have your bending jig and or, or your mold to wrap this around do a dry run but leaving the excess uh, over here and then once you got it then just mark it where you're going to cut it and then when you know the length that you need take everything out cut it up sew these two together so that you have this buckle attached to that end and then it will be the right length for the jig that you made and that's why I didn't think that this measurement would help you so what I'm going to do is to do this tensioner uh, fairly tight because I want to make sure let's have a look around here you can see uh, there's not much glue coming out there there's much more glue coming out this side when well, it started to come out here so let's put a bit more tension there yeah that's good there's not much glue coming out but I can see that this is this is a good join and if for any reason it was a little bit open at this edge I can always cut off a little bit and in the middle it will be nice and tight so I'm happy with this right so all we need to do with this now is to put it to one side and leave it to dry for a good few hours because there's quite a bit of glue here normally this type of glue within half an hour 45 minutes you can work with it but for something like this where there's quite a bit of glue I actually would leave it until uh, the following day I think that would be safest so that's what you got here everything looks pretty good and now we're just gonna put it to one side and wait until it dries so I'm just gonna put it somewhere here right I got a bit of mess in my bench which we need to remove before this glue dries completely here so it's just gonna take me a moment and while the glue is still a little damp that's it right so by tomorrow all of that will be completely dry and when you take it out it will look like this and basically all I've done is to cut just one of these strips you can see this is more or less the same width as what we saw before and I've just cut one from here so you saw this in the beginning of the video but really this is what you get when it comes out of the of the bending jig well of the mold where we glue it the, not, not the bending jig which is actually to bend the wood so what we're going to do is to see how to cut this this is really easy to do in the bandsaw and what we're going to do is to um, to get these two pieces to align properly we're going to cut a very thin amount just enough to cut through and through both of them and then 
we will be cutting the width that we need here. So if we come over to the bandsaw, what we're going to do is to set up the bandsaw first just to cut a few millimeters, something like that. And this is going to be a little bit noisy, so you might want to turn the volume down so that you don't get too much noise coming through your speakers. So here we go. So you can see, let's bring it over here again, we've lost a little bit of material here, which is fine, because what that's done now is to get everything nice and level. And you can see that the join is very nice and there's no gaps anywhere. So what we're going to do is to set it up to cut another strip in the bandsaw. So I'm going to set this up at about 11 millimeters, so something like that. And now we're ready to cut our lining. So back to the noise. Right, so now we have two linings and you can see that with one piece 45 millimeters wide you can get the linings for one guitar. You have a little bit left over, mm, I don't know if it will be enough to get another two, they'll be a little small, but you can do, you know, if you do more than just for one, you'll end up being able to use the same off, you know, an off cut to build to make more um, linings with. So I can use the, the leftover from here and the leftover from another one and get a few more guitars. So you can do a little bit more than just one instrument with this method. So now really all we got left to do here is to clean up this edge, which I was mentioning earlier in the video. Actually, I will do a little bit. You'll see how really simple that job is. So you can do that in this vise, but I like fit in a smaller bias in here. So what you need to do is to make sure that you have the um, round corner in the right place. So usually what I do is that I put them down in the bench like that to have the right shape, make sure that they're not of the same side, but one for each side. And then you mark this one and this one or you can do it the other way as well. So you put them in here like that. And I did this side because I already rounded this up a little bit. So I got my mark here and my mark here. What I don't want to do is to make a mistake and do two at the same side because obviously that's not going to work. So I'm going to put this one to one side and I'm going to do a little bit of the shaping in this one. And usually what I do is that I mark down the middle, which is where the joint line is using my finger as a marking edge, and then more or less the same amount in the inside, which is the corner will be seen from the sound hole, like that, okay? And 
Now I bring it to the vise. I could mark that all the way along. Then I make a flat uh, facet here, line to line. There you are. So once I've done that all the way along, then I will knock off this little edge that I have here. And the same with the other one. And that has already the round shape that I need. It's just that it's a bit rough from the file. So what I do now is to get a piece of 120 sandpaper. I fold it a few times and just with the thumb you can remove all the scratches from the um, grass and get this nice and clean and if you want to do then the same with a little bit of 180 to make it even cleaner that would be great but you could leave it like that as well so basically, once you've done that all the way along, then this is your lining ready to fit it into your guitar. This is still too long, so you need to work out how much to cut from each end and so on. But that is a very different job altogether. And this is basically how you make laminated linings. There are different types of linings. So you can also use solid linings and bend them from a solid piece using the right material to be able to bend because if the, like I said before if this was this thick and you put it in the bending jig it's not always going to bend so easily even with the steam and so on so that'll be the matter for another video in this video I just wanted to show how to do it in um, when they are laminated as laminations and you can see they work really well and they will do a really good job for you and you can do it with any material that you want so this is uh, the end of this video. I hope you find it helpful and until the next one.